Welcome to the practical session on classification. It's quite exciting, I think, because it might be the first time for many of you that you're actually going to train a machine learning model yourself. And the task that we're going to look at here in detail is the prediction of the quality of cars. So we're going to predict whether cars should be bought or not. So imagine you're a car dealer and you want to automate your processes and figure out is this a good car to buy or not. What we're going to use for this is the so-called car evaluation database, which has 1,728 instances. So it's information about 1,728 different cars. And for each car, we have six attributes and four classes. The attributes include the cost of buying, and that can range from very high to high to medium to low. We have information about the cost of maintenance, which ranges from very high to high, medium to low. We have the number of doors of the car. We have the number of people that fit in the car. We have information about the luggage boot of the car. And we have an assessment of the safety of the car, which ranges from low to medium to high. So let's consider the different labels of the cars. So this is our classification. This is the classification that our model is going to learn. And what you can see here is that the assessment goes from unacceptable to acceptable to good to very good. We have a bit more than 350 cars that we consider acceptable. So these are okayish deals. We have very few very good cars, also very few good cars, and a lot of bad deals. And our system now has to learn how to distinguish these, how to use the attributes to make the classification into these four different groups. Here on top, you see the data that you're given. So this is a data set that I found online that's commonly used for teaching. And you see that a lot of the data is in text. So you have things like very high, V high, you have small, low, unacceptable based on the different columns. And the first task that you have as a data scientist is turning that into numbers, turning that into a format that the computer can read. You're lucky this time because I already did that for you. So I went there and, for instance, for very high, I assigned the number four. For high, I assigned the number three. I converted all the text into numbers. And what we're going to do now is we're going to split the data, split it into our targets and our attributes. And then we're going to train a model. Here's a short visualization of the indexing and how it works. You can see that we take all the cars, that's the blue dimension, we select the attributes, so they go from buying to maintenance to doors, person, luck boot, safety, and then we extract the eighth column as our target as the class. And by convention, we call the attributes X and the targets Y. Here is the nomenclature again. Just pause on it and have another look. These are instances, these are individual cars, features, attributes. That's what we're going to use to predict and classes. This is Jupyter Notebook. You should have seen this by now. And what we're going to do is we're going to start a new notebook and we're going to call it classification. And we're going to use the pandas library. So we're importing pandas. And since I don't want to write pandas all the time, I'm going to give it the shortcut pd. So the first thing we're going to do is we load our car database. And that is found in the file car.csv that you can find on stud.ip. Just have a quick look at this. So here we have some headers. We have the names of the different columns. And we have all the data points. There are 1,700. 28 cars. So what we're going to do is we're going to load this with the pandas function read underscore csv for comma separated file. So read csv. And since we have a header file, we set header to zero so that we know that these are the column names. 
And now we can have a look at the files. So again, we loaded the same file that we saw, so this worked out quite well. You see that it already recognized the headers because we said the first line was reserved for the headers. So the first thing we're going to do now is to save the different attributes. And for this, we're going to use the uppercase X. We're going to select from the values all the cars, that was the blue dimension in the example that I showed you earlier. And we're going to use the everything from buying to safety. So this is the second column to the eighth column, excluding the eight. And we start indexing with zero, so don't get confused. So now we assigned the attributes to X, and we can have a look at the shape. So now we have six attributes for the 1728 cars that we have. We can also have a look at this. So this is an array of all the information about the cars. So these are our attributes. Next, we're going to save our targets. And again, this is the unacceptable, acceptable, good, very good assessment of the different cars. And as you already saw, this is saved in the H column. And we're going to set it as follows. So this is then a vector with just the assessment whether this is a good, acceptable or bad. So what we're going to do now is we're going to perform the train test split. And this is a function that we can use from scikit-learn. It's in the package model selection. So we just paste in the text here, we just write text and we run this. So then we can call this function. Quick tip, if you're unsure on how to use this function, you can always run help on each of the functions and it gives you all the help information with the different attributes that you can use. So keep that in mind, you can do that on any Python object. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to replace this with the call of the function train test split for which we give the attributes as a parameter and the targets as a parameter and we set the size of our test set. We take 20% here for testing and 80% for training and this function returns four things. It returns the training data, the attributes for training, the x train, the attributes for testing, the x test, the targets for training, and the targets for testing. So this is nicely subdivided. And we can just have a look on whether it works. So we can look at the size of the train set and the size of the test set with the shape attribute. And we can see that we now have 1,382 cars that we're going to use to train the model and 346 to test our generalization capability. We're going to use the k nearest neighbor classifier that I showed you and explained to you in the lecture. And this is in the package called neighbors. So we're importing k neighbors classifier from scikit-learn.neighbors. And we're going to instantiate this by setting the number of k to 3. So we going to instantiate a classifier, CLF, of k neighbors classifier, where we set k, the number of neighbors, to 3. And this is the machine learning model that we're going to use from scikit-learn. It's all nicely packaged. So all we have to do now is to train our classifier. And we do that by fitting the model. So we take our classifier and run the function fit. So we give it our attributes and our targets. And this already trained a machine learning model. So let's make some predictions. So what we're going to do here is we call the function predict, with which we can make the predictions and we're going to take our test set and make predictions. And I'm only looking at the first five predictions here. But what you do, you give it this array, 
and you get an array back. So you give it some attributes and you get some predicted targets back. And we can compare this now to the actual, actual data that we had. So we can compare this to our Y test. So let's look at the top five examples in Y test. And we can see, okay, the first one got predicted correctly. The second one was wrong. The third one was correct. The fourth one was correct. The fifth one was correct. So we made one mistake here. But as you see, we have 346 examples. So we're going to automate this a bit. We're not looking at each one of them individually. And for this, we're going to use the accuracy function. And that's in the package called metrics. And I'm too lazy to type. I'm just copying and pasting. So we're loading the function accuracy score from the package cycle and metrics. And what we're going to do here is, and, and this function takes two parameters. It takes the true scores. That's our Y test. That's what we know. That's from our testing data, our test set, and our predictions. So we're going to give it the model and the prediction for the test attributes. And it's calculating the accuracy of our model. And at this point, it's 88 percent of the time correct. So 12% of the cars are misclassified. If you want to make this a bit more ti tidy in your code, you can also round the number. You can also make this a bit more readable. We could say why predict is our prediction and we save the prediction to that variable and then we only compare our prediction to our test set that we know it doesn't change anything. But the nice thing about this now and the way the code test is written is that we can easily change the number of neighbors. So we can say, okay, what about if we take five neighbors into account? And what we can do here, so I change the number of neighbors here and I click run cells. So it's rerunning all the cells. And we can see that our accuracy improved quite a bit, a bit more than 6%. So you now trained your own K nearest neighbor classifier. Congratulations on that. And I'm going to show you now with the schema how easy it is to compare different machine learning. So what if we don't want to use the K nearest neighbor classifier? We could replace this with the linear support vector machine. So we take the linear support vector machine from the package SVM. And we're going to set this to our classifier. It doesn't have a number of neighbors, so you just can run it like this. You can rerun the whole code and see that we have a much worse accuracy for this simple model. We can also try out neural networks. It's another package that we can use. We can just replace the classifier here with a three layer neural network that we're going to train. And it takes some seconds, but it has much, much higher accuracy, actually the highest accuracy that we've seen so far. So let's recap. What we've seen here is we learned all the different parts of the code that we need to train a model. We saw that due to the design of the scikit-learn library, we can really easily change different parts, almost like Lego blocks that we're going to stick together. So we can just move from a neural network to a support vector machine to a k-nearest neighbor classifier. You can also look at the example from the lecture where I compared different case. So we can have a for loop where we compare that. And that's it for the classification. So what's next? Next, of course, is to update your LinkedIn profile uh, and to make sure that everybody knows that you know AI and machine learning. But after that, you have to look at the exercise. And what I want you to do is to use the Breast Cancer Wisconsin Diagnostic Dataset to train a machine learning system to detect breast cancer. You find the source for the dataset there. It will also be available on StudIP. And the dataset has a variety of K 
cancer cases that all have an ID and they all have a diagnosis. And we ha what we have in the data set is we have 10 attributes, they're all real valued features that are computed on each cell nucleus. That's the radius of the cell, that's the mean distance from center to points on the perimeter. We have the texture, which is the standard deviation of grayscale values. We have the parameter, the area, the smoothness, which are local variations in radius length. We have the compactness, which is the parameter squared over the area minus one. The concavity, which is the severity of concave points of the contour. The concave points, which is the number of concave proportions of the contour. The symmetry and the fractal dimension, which is the coastline approximation minus one. And for each of these attributes, we have a diagnosis, whether the cancer was malignant or benign. And I want you to take the example that I showed you and to adapt it to train a machine learning system. And I want you to hand in the iPython notebook to Stutt IP.